Hey YouTube, thank you so much for the great response on the 33x33 video. Uh, a lot of you asked me if I was going to make some more videos about it, and the answer is yes, I will be making four this month if everything goes according to plan, and uh, then we'll see. So for now, here it is, the assembly video for the 33x33x33. Now if I wanted to talk about the whole project, I would need to include the 3D design step, but I will do this in another video explaining the mechanism. So the first thing I got once it was printed was the parts in big packages, so this is 60% of the parts next to my cat, so it's a huge puzzle. So overall I got plenty of stacks of parts like this, and the stacks were spread out into different layers, and by layers I mean circles around the center, so the outer layer being the 17th layer, which is the biggest. Now when you 3D print, some of the parts can be fused, that can happen. So the first step was to separate the parts, and that took about 10 hours, plus I had to actually figure out which parts were missing, so I had to go and take a look back at the computer assisted design software to figure out which parts I needed to reprint. And then I had to sort them into different packages labeled with the number of the, of the layer that each part was on. And that was a very, very large amount of work. This took about 25 hours, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 30, I think, the first time. So it was a lot of work, it was very tiring. And even though I had TV series playing on my computer at the same time, it was very exhausting. And I also stacked the 17th layer to make it easier to assemble later on. Now here's a video of me at the time to show you my state of mind during the assembly. So at this point in the video, we are the 10th of September. I've just released my uh, Constellation, and I'm about to release my Octahedron Star Minx and Tangram Minx. Uh, so the status on the 33 by 33 is I've counted all the parts um, 226 were misprinted or missing, and they send me those, um, they reprinted them and send me those. And um, so now I've just received another package, which is a 72 pack of RIT dye. So now the next step is to dye all the parts black. So here we go. So I've got layers 1 through 16 set up on this side with the dye right there, and layer 17 on that side, which is the biggest one, obviously. And um, the reason I'm using so, man so many packs of dye is that I want to get a consistent black color in there and if I don't get enough, I'll just add some while I dye the parts. So I'm going to put all of this in there with some water, boil everything and add the parts to dye them all. Now the issue with the dyeing process is that this is a chemical that's very strong, so it has a strong smell, you get a headache after a while, especially if you're doing this for 10 hours, and if you get some on your hands, then your hands become black. So when I was at work, my colleagues looked at me and were like, why are your hands black? So I mean, it's not without reason that this is called the dyeing process. And then I had to clean the parts and lay them out to dry them, so as you can see, there were a lot of parts. So at this point I put the parts in the bags again and counted them again, so I'm not going to show you this part, but I did record something. So I want to apologize because I didn't film the beginning of the assembly. Uh, nevertheless, I did take some videos of what the puzzle looked like while I was assembling it. So I, I just want to show you, uh, so at first it looked like a 9x9, because there's an inner 9x9 I was assembling, that's the core of the 33x33. And uh, in between those layers, there are going to be three parts uh, that way, you know, three layers in between each 9x9 layer leads to 33 by 33 So that's what the puzzle looked like at the end of the 9x9 assembly. And uh, as of right now, I've assembled the, the rest of the large edges. So this is what the 33 by 33 looks like. Uh, let me see if I can show it from up close. You can still see the 9x9 in there. And here you have 33 layers of edges. And just for scale, uh, here's a Rubik's Cube. So this is what it looks like compared to a regular Rubik's Cube. So yeah, it's a pretty crazy puzzle and I'm eager to finish stickering and assembling this beast. So this I will take a video of. So now it's time to apply the stickers and uh, I brought a few friends of mine to work on this. So here we have the, the goblets in which I put one unique piece in each goblet. And uh, we're taking the parts out. We've got three people stickering the parts. And uh, I'm uh, applying super glue on top of them so that the stickers are sealed in. And uh, I've got another person working on the, the external layer stickers. It's starting to look really good. So yeah, let's see and uh, finish that and then we'll just have to assemble everything. So uh, I found a way to optimize the stickering method. So I'm taking four stickers at a time on a, on a cutter blade 
on an exacto knife blade and stickering them one by one on the different parts and that's actually quite quick um, making a small mistake right there but um, yeah it's it's actually really quick because I can manage to do about 24 parts every four minutes so uh, so yeah that's uh, that's a good way to do it now for the stickers I found a way to do the super glue coating quite easily I've put super glue right there and I'm rubbing the parts against each other uh, after uh, putting one part in super glue so that there's like some sort of thin layer of super glue coating over the stickers and uh, with that method I can manage about 24 stickers every minute and a half. So overall that's a total stickering time of 18 hours and a total gluing time of 7 hours which is you know a good explanation for the, for the headache I have right now because I'm sniffing a cyanoacrylate and I've been doing so for about an hour so so yeah it's a, it's a good method but then again it, it's, it's not painless. <laughs> So here I am stickering the last 3,000 parts, so that was a lot of work, I think about 30 hours, but anyways, I will summarize this at the end of the video explaining how long it took me for every step. Also, this step wasn't exactly painless because there were some accidents, as you can see. And um, at the end, well, I did the super glue coating and that was a lot of work, about 18 hours. And for the, for the large stickers and uh, you know the, the edge stickers basically, uh, I actually found a, a really good way to do the super glue coating the same way as I did the smaller stickers. I actually took a toothbrush and, and just rubbed super glue on it and that was really efficient. I managed to do everything in just uh, an hour or so, maybe less. So um, at least just for the coating, the stickering took some time. But yeah, it's a, it's a really good method for, for assembling big cubes like that. So here I am sorting the goblets in which there are the parts so that I know which part goes where on the face to make it easier to assemble. And there were a lot of goblets. And finally I had to lubricate the whole puzzle because otherwise it would not turn well. So I think I used about two and a half bottles of this. And the next step is the fun part, the assembly. Now here's where I assembled every single face and this is why I, uh, I spread out the parts in layers and by layers I meant circles around the center, it's because I started from the outside and went inwards. So that was a really fun process. I had all the goblets spread out, so at first it took some time because I had to sort the parts uh, since they were already stickered. I had to, to take out the yellow ones for that face and then the green ones, etc. But the more faces I completed, the less I had to sort them. So that was fun and it got better uh, with time. So that was, uh, that was great. And at the end I had to do the cross uh, because there was too much tension on the parts and then I assembled the rest of the parts on the inside. So uh, that was a lot of work. Uh, it was really fun though, so um, I think that was about 42 hours of work in total for the assembly. And to be perfectly honest with you, it was actually quite difficult to assemble the last parts of this puzzle. And now the next step was to break in the puzzle. So what I did was I put two straps around it to really condense the parts together and then I did the first turn. And then I turned it again, again, and again, until it spun well. And at the end it spun really, really well. But don't forget that with straps you're condensing the parts together, so they're really tight together and there are barely no lockups, so it's not really representative of the turning quality. So anyways, this is how I assembled it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to subscribe. I will be releasing more videos like this in the future, uh, including videos of the 33x33. So thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow.